on as well. Let's read this through together. And the topic proposal speech, is everybody on that page in your packet? Right. This speech is going to be grounded in the basics of informative public speaking. This speech is simply to inform us about where your topic is. That's what you're going to inform us about and where it's situated and what some of its key components are. But this is where you are going to propose your idea for the semester. And so that's our next speech. Most rhetorical arts classes write this paper, but I like to have you talk about it. Okay. If you're wondering what, where your friends are doing in your third classes. Do you ever talk about that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everybody still get one. It's so funny. They really try to streamline this class, but they let us go over like that. <laughs> just get it on camera. All right. <laughs> uh, so we'll do the informative, basic informative structure, the basic informative organizational pattern, and that means for your main points. We'll talk a little bit about some of the basic elements, obviously, of delivery as well. But you are going to be explaining to your class the research or what you did really in your pre-search for this topic of social justice that you'll be doing this for the semester. So since your topic approval revolves around your findings from the pre-search assignment, you will use the information found within it to develop a two to three minute speech. Which leads me to also remember that if you want to take a photo of anything before we leave today, because you didn't make a photocopy of it, and you would like to look at your work to start working on this, Feel free to take it back and then do that again. So you're going to develop a two to three minute speech. Again, much like that of the introduction speech. I won't be stopping you for this speech, so we will get through them quite quickly. You are going to be required to use an attention getter. Then reveal our topic, provide a clear thesis with the central idea, the transitions, the body, the conclusion, all again. So as I wrote down here, a good attention getter will spark the audience's interest, which we know, it hooks them in. A good central idea states what you will cover. So in this class, or in this case, we could do something like, I will discuss my research question, how does trafficking of young women and children contribute to sex tourism in the United States? And your main points will state how you will cover it. These three main points will be the same these are the areas that I want you to cover. And so each of your main points will be divided into these three. And if you see it here, it's first you're going to talk about some key debates that surround your issue. Then how you plan to research that topic further. And finally, why you believe that your topic fulfills the definition of social justice. So you're going to justify those. So in essence, although an informative presentation, you are also using rhetorical devices for us to be, because what can we do inside of informational speeches as well? Persuaded. We can be persuaded that this is a social justice. Yeah, or that this is a good choice for you, or that this is going to be an excellent topic, right? Although informative, it also has those elements of rhetoric. And then after you're all done, we will draw to a conclusion. Does this make sense to you so far? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm kind of confused on the second point, like how I plan to research the topic further. Like, so you're writing how you're gonna like do more research, or I'm like confused, like what? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to go over it all. Okay. I'm going to go through the entire speech, so we can. I'll give you some examples. Okay. And stuff. And then, um, if that doesn't make sense, which I know it gets sketchy, you're like, what? You let me know. Okay. okay. Let's turn to the next page. You can always see here that this is the format and the structure. And of course, I may do that little grid as well, but you can follow along with this. Then on the page after that, you have the top of speech checklist. <clears throat> Okay, the only thing about that is that because I didn't have you turn in that pre-search assignment, 
on that day, and instead of having you turn it in today, you'll see on the topic proposal that it asks you to staple that pre-search assignment or that research assignment. You don't have to do that, obviously. I'm the last thing I'm going to check because you won't have it. And then you have your evaluation sheet, and the topic proposal speech evaluation sheet is what you'll bring in to me that day. Sound good? Yeah. Just sending the speeches on Thursday, right? Yeah. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday, which would make sense. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Let me explain it to you, and you've already done the work. And then you tell me how you feel. Go ahead. I'm just scared that the topic <coughs> that we have in mind isn't going to work out, and then I have to think of like a completely new topic with a new event. I know. That's why I wanted you to turn it in today, because okay. you know what I'm going to do for all of you? Read through the proof. Yeah, and then I'll email you. Okay. Don't worry, you will know by tomorrow afternoon if this works or not. Okay. And I can go back and about and reshape it for you, but and if one that I see in there works better, <coughs> then I'll also suggest that to you. And if you need to talk to me about it, great. But otherwise, that should be to you in your email. I'll go by tomorrow morning. So do you want our highlighted questions to on Tuesday as well? No, so let's do that. <coughs> Good idea, huh? So that makes more sense, right? That's what I was saying next Thursday. So, um, so we will have, and I'm going to write this up. Oh my gosh, you see what I'm doing? Oh, I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on the projector screen. It would have been on camera too. What? Like <coughs> it would have been on camera too. Okay, let's turn this thing off. So, 9.20. Proposal speech. The only thing that's due that day, the speech. 9.22, turn in social justice and privilege revisions. Going to be doing a lecture this day that is going to have you develop your thesis for your informative speech, which is the first speech about your topic. And then that's going to be due later on over the weekend as a post to my LMU Connect. But I will discuss that next week. Nothing you have to worry about now. Sound good? You don't know it? Giving you any information about it. No need to keep going. Speech on Tuesday, social justice revisions on Thursday. All right. Now, let us continue. So, for. Thank you. For the purpose of this speech, let's do the same kind of rundown that we did last time with our explanations. So like usual, we will always start every speech out with some kind of, give it to me. Are you going to start with your topic? No. Are you going to start with your name? No. Are you going to start with an um, uh, you know, like, or whatever? No. You're going to start with your attention getter. And that attention getter should always be related to the? To the central idea, to the purpose that you are speaking to about the topic. And in this case, your topic or the purpose of this speech is to propose this question that we talked about last time. Is that clear to everybody? Therefore, our attention getter and the type of attention getter that we choose should be grounded in that. So before 
It was easy because we were talking about ourselves and asking any type of question or maybe saying a fact or telling a fun story. We had all of those on our own. But what I encourage you to do is to remember our different types of attention getting devices. So I mentioned the question and the story. And then what else? Well, maybe a fact or a statistic or a quote or. I don't know what's funny in social justice, but we can find some of it. I'm kidding. What each of these needs to do is get us interested in your topic and what I suggest as a way to make somebody believe that this is a product that they need, if it is a value that they have to buy into, if it is a topic that you need to approve, the persuasive tactic is to establish a need. Because otherwise, all of us are like, why are we even talking? Why is this a need, right? So we're going to justify a lot about why this is an issue or a social justice issue. But what you could do here in your attention getter if you want, and this is a suggestion. If you have a better idea, I'm all going out for it. But is there a statistic that you came across that demonstrated the severity of the issue and its need to be put into a public space for discourse? Is there a repercussion or a fallout that has happened that we could talk about? Is there a story or a testimony that you could paraphrase of an individual who has been harmed or hurt or traumatized by your topic? use more than one attention getter like could you for example say a story and then be like and then share a percentage if that somehow works out with your topic we can use it as the attention getter and okay. use it as a reveal topic okay right so the attention getter we don't want to give away our topic but instead we want to gain their interest is it what are they talking about? Oh my gosh, what is this? Who said that? What is happening? I want to go fight for them, right? So we start off that way. Then you can reveal your topic, and then you could give us a couple details there if you wanted. Does that make sense? Okay. But, that makes sense. Yeah. Be, yeah, because I would always say one attention getter only. Otherwise, then we end up going down the long laundry list of questions and stories and jokes. And I know. Let's get it. Sound good? So each of you think that you could accomplish this and you know that you have the research and you know where to start to look and maybe you even come up you've come across some stories already? Some ideas? Okay. Yeah. Can we do definition? You can. A definition is fine, but what I would almost do is that if the definition I mean in what context? Do you mind me asking? Again, I would feel like that would be more of a topic reveal portion so that you give us some type of background about what obesity is and what it's actually like categorized as. But if you wanted to say something like, this is, this is Manny. He weighs 150 pounds. He is 4'11", and he is 12 years old. Manny is suffering from what individuals call obesity. But what he is also suffering from that many may not know is malnutrition. To the average individual, man, he looks like a very healthy and overfed child. However, because of the current state of food deserts in our United States society. What did I say? What was his name? Manny. 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 <laughs> Manny is <clears throat> deemed also obese. For those of you who don't know, obesity is defined as. Does that make sense? Because the definition may not be very interesting. Obesity is defined as blah, 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 blah. Because that knowledge about what obesity is 
isn't something that we don't have access to. That's built into our society. It's really a regular everyday dialogue. So I would just think about it that way. Does that make sense, Joanne? Yeah. All right. Any other questions about this attention? Let's move forward. The second thing that you do in your introduction is you. <coughs> Let's reveal that topic. Now, the reveal topic portion of this speech. Again, we are going to wait a little bit to reveal our actual question until you get to your thesis. So instead, in the reveal topic, simply tell us the broad topic. He suffers from things called, you know, Food deserts, right? And like food deserts is the topic that I've talk, chosen to talk about. Uh, sexual assault on college campuses is what I is the area that I am I want to focus on. A topic of major concern that has been revealed through this statistic is that of domestic violence, and I'd like to go further on that, right? And so this is where you can define what it is, because in social justice as well, which you make a very good point here, Monique that we often don't even know what these words are if we haven't experienced them. And I'm sure that many of you went through your research and you're like, what the heck is that? Like a food desert. Do any of you know what a food desert is? No, exactly. So food deserts, and that would be a great way to explain it. So this is simply an overall use of the language and reveal the topic. But what else can you do in the reveal topic portion? Or what else should you do? This is where you tell us any. Background. Yes, yeah. oh my gosh, wonderful. Background information that we may need to know about in the rest of the speech that could, it could inform us, but we haven't yet gotten to. So you never want to talk about anything in your reveal topic portion that you're going to necessarily simply repeat in the body of this speech. So any information that we should know, definitions, terminology, um, you may even want to talk about, like, this is a, a situation that is present only in a specific country, if that's the possibility, or if it's only, only uh, relevant for the residents of California. You can mention that. So any details or information we may need to know. Definitions would be great here, but also any other terminology that you're going to be referring to, you can lay out up front in this part. So again, if there's technical jargon that you need to use, lay that out for the audience, but always turn to the jargon that everybody will understand instead, use that language. You can also identify any types of terms or maybe acronyms that you would be using. Does this make sense to y'all? There's no need to restate your name. You can, if you want to, in this reveal topic portion. Um, but the purpose isn't about you. It's about the topic. So most speeches that you ever give in your life, people will be introducing you. And that's somewhat of how I will, of course, do it as well. I'll, we call this up, and we know who you are. Your name's on the board, and we'll call your name. You come up and do that. And we assume that the introduction has been done for you already. Somebody's always there to give you a shout out. So by the time you come up, people are like, wow, this person is a genius. What's the last thing that we do? Thesis. Yeah, the thesis. <coughs> and essentially, this is your preview, right? This is where we are going to preview the speech. This is where we finally know exactly what you are going to be ta talking, about. talking about. Yeah, and I'll take that question. Uh, we're going to work on based on the review topic. Yes, you do. So in the background, or sorry, and I didn't write it down, but if you see there on your paper, we, that's what we were just talking about. Any type of a background information that we may need is done in the reveal topic. So you're going to tell us the topic in general, and then you can get, provide us with any definitions, or if you need to tell us maybe where this takes place. If you're not going to talk about who the power players are, or who the agents are, or who's it affecting in your speech, then give that to us up front as well. Maybe you want to add that detail in. And additionally, that's also the place for jargon and technical words. Does that make sense now? Okay, good. Then, I feel like we need to plug this. Is there a plug on that side? I 
going to pull this forward a bit. Everybody, so. I know. I'm going to do that and try not to fall. <laughs> when we talk about a thesis, your thesis is a combination of two things, friends. What are they? Yeah, what if you'll talk about and how you'll talk about. And the what is also known as your se, se, central idea. Good enthusiasm. <laughs> and then the other part, or the... Bringing them here. Um, and then the other part will be your... It's a combination of the central idea and the... The how are known as your... Me, 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 me. Main points. Great job, everybody. You know that, right? <laughs> if you get to know me better, I'll talk about my job, my family, and what I like to do on weekends, right? To tell you about the topic. And then how? You get it, right? Yes, yes. or no? Because yes. we can all go back through this. All right, great. Let's take a look then at this idea of the thesis for the purpose of this speech. So our central idea... What's the purpose of this speech? <coughs> to what, everybody? To introduce your topic. Absolutely. So what is a way that you think you could say, in order for you to get to know my topic better? But now we are going to reveal the question. So how do you think that you could format that? Or how do you think that you can construct that? What's a good lead-in? Again, it's a personalized speech because it's your own words or your own ideas. It's going to be your own positions and your own opinions. So you can, of course, use the word I. So we could say something like, in order for you to know how I, or in order for you to understand the question I have decided upon, or... Today, I'd like to tell you about my research question, which is blah, 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 blah. And I will do so by describing. Does that make sense to you all? What, yeah? Um, so like, in your thesis, you don't say a question? You will. We do need to hear that, I'm sorry, I didn't continue on with that idea. So if I said, I'd like to present to you the question that I have concluded on, which is, and then you can say the question, and I'll tell you about that through three different ways. First the blah, then the blah, third the blah. Yes, hon. And um, the whole speech is supposed to be like not your opinion, like you're not supposed to persuade. Yes, and it would only be persuasive in as much as that was your thesis. Like to persuade you that this is the best topic, I will describe blah, blah, and blah. If that was your central idea, then it would automatically become persuasive. But <coughs> it won't be because all you're doing is informing us that your question is blank. And you're going to describe how you arrived at that question by describing things blank. So take a second, will you, with another person, and let's pretend, yeah, and let's pretend that your topic is, um, Okay, good. Um, uh, 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 how I arrived at um, why? What is it? Huh? I don't even know. This probably doesn't even make sense. Why magazines objectify? Um, Let's say that's your topic. That's or just, a good one. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. So why is this happening? This is your idea. But the purpose that each of you will have, or all of you will have the same main points, and these main points are going to be on that paper that if you read the topic proposal again. So what are the three ideas, everybody? Well, the first one, let me go back to this. There we go. So the first one, your first main point, is going to be 
where I would like you to address some key debates. What are some major issues that are revolving and surrounding your topic? What are some of those important elements of your topic that have drawn you to want to talk about this? What about it makes it even, if you start thinking about it, what makes it a, a contingent issue? Because, or what makes it something that is interesting, that's relevant, that, or what specific details could you even lend to us? Does that make sense? So it's key points, and that's all you'll say. And then you'll say research, and then you'll say the last one is going to be how it fits into social justice. So does anybody want to take a stab beyond the example that, well, why don't you just work with somebody real quick? Will you write me a thesis about this? Just turn to a buddy. You have to combine the two. But do the lead in. I'll talk to you about this topic that is blank. You can do it as easily as that, or maybe you can come up with another creative way to, to state it. Like, Something else. No pressure. Wait, is the thesis for our topic? No, you can use the sample. Use the sample. That makes it easy. Then it's our, that's why I wrote it. So that it's already done for you. All I need you to do is do the wording around it. How are you going to place it into something? That I simply want you to use this and put it into your own words. Get crazy. I'm not even going to tell you. I want you to use your own words and make a central idea plus the main points. However you would say it. Amanda, I want to use this topic. And I'm going to talk about it like blank and blank and blank. Great. Okay, go. And that's their all answer. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're going to work with the job. Like, you can talk about the job. when they, they, they did. Go. It doesn't matter if you're right. There's no book. We're all learning at the same speed, remember? So no need for bashful videos. I always call it bashful video, like Katy Perry. <laughs> bashful video. <laughs> um, to understand why magazines are justified when they create dehumanization, I will talk about um, Yeah. Okay, so to understand why <coughs> magazines objectify women through dehumanization, that's what your informative speech is going to be, right? This is to understand 
how I arrived at the what topic. Does that make sense? I have concluded on the question. Why do magazines objectify women through dehumanization? Does that make sense? What the difference in those two is? Oh, so we're not only talking about we're just talking about like how we got it. Because all this is is you proposing this as your topic. I would like to propose my topic today through a research question. The question is going to be so again, don't worry about making it into one simple sentence. Feel free to have a complex sentence. The point is, is that you've gotten the central idea and your main points in there. So, after much examination and research, I have decided that I would like to explore the research question, why do magazines objectify women through dehumanization? And to do so, I'm going to tell you about what I found surrounding this topic and its key debates. I'm then going to describe to you how I plan to research and explore this topic further. And then finally, I'm going to describe how this topic sits perfectly in the realm of social justice. Does this make sense to you? Yeah? Wait, so you said, like, I'd like to explore the question, period, and then to do so, as in, like, to, as I'm exploring it, or are you saying, or you're, you're just explaining it to me, you're not explaining it to me, for me to research, or to tell you? You don't want, this is all about you. I don't want us to go out there and research it. I don't want you to go out and find topics. Is that what you're saying? I just, I just, between the two sentences, I didn't catch the transition. I don't know what I said. I made it up. Let me do it again. You, you can rewatch it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, can you just say it? Like, I'll say it someone else. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I'll try to make it complex. Oh, my God, this is okay. <laughs> um, um, After much deliberation, I have arrived at the research, or here's a good one. This semester, I have decided to focus my energies in exploring the realm of sexual assault. And to do so, I believe that the question, why do magazines objectify women through dehumanization, will allow me to explore this topic in full. To do this, I am going, or uh, sorry, to explain a bit more about my decision to have this as my question, I'll talk first about some key issues surrounding the debate that are interesting to me. Then I'll talk to you about how I plan to research further. And finally, I'll tell you why I believe that this fits into the realm of social justice. And feel free to bring in your own ideas as well. So, what do we have here? Ooh, seven, okay. Um, does that make a little bit more sense? That even if it is a little bit more complex, and you don't have to fit it all in one <coughs> sentence, because the way that we are suggesting a question doesn't make for a one sentence. Like an easy to get to know me better, I'll tell you about blink, 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 right? The sentence structure doesn't work. So I'm telling everyone what my topic is and why did I choose it? You're telling everybody what your question is. And then you're going to tell them the key points of that topic. How you're going to research it? How it fits in the realm of social justice. And actually to use those words in my Everybody has the exact same three main points. Yeah? All right. Now, because we talked, and I'm going to keep going, because I will keep recording this, if you have to go on to a next class, which I know some of you do, feel free to go. I'm going to keep going on this for like six more minutes, and then we'll go right into conferences. Sound good? No crash if you can't stick around. But remember, I will in about two minutes. Does everybody understand this as to why you're not going to inform us about why do magazines objectify women? 
because that's what your entire informative speech is going to do. That's the next speech. This is simply to tell me, this is my topic, Amanda. I chose this question. So class, I've chosen this question to explore for our first speech. The question is, why do magazines objectify women through dehumanization? I'll tell you a couple key points, how the research is going to be conducted, and finally, why this is a question of social justice. Yeah? So you can take any of those and rework them and mix and match. Did any of you have a good one that you wanted to share? No good ones at all? I thought yours was great. And you brought up such a good point. All right, between each of your main points, meaning right before that thesis, what are you going to give, A? Transition. Yes. Transition, right? You know, transition is a combination of three things. Your signpost, which lets us know what we're going into, first, second, third, to begin, next, finally. Or you can do the signpost as the combination I've told you a little bit about. Now I'll still tell you about. We've discussed this. Next, let's look forward to, right, however you want to use those signposts. Then the main point that you will be discussing. And then finally, a reminder of what is your question again? Does that make sense to you? Okay, good. Then with any of your main points, so let's talk about this first main point. So the key issues like we were talking about. So what are some of these? And so what I said here, um, key debates, pick two. So you can pick down from the key ideas here. And if you have to go, you can come and grab these and take pictures of them if you want to. But if you see here, remember this idea of the who, the what, the where, the how, these would be great key issues for you. Now, if you kind of phone this in and you don't think these are maybe your key issues, maybe you want to go back and pick out a couple others. But maybe these key issues, if the who, what, where, and how, just as an FYI, these are more than likely going to be making up your main points of your informative speech. Because you speak like a journalist any anyway. Anyway, so the who, what, when, where, why, and how is really what we're going to be going around to understand what this topic is to begin with, or what the issue is, or why this is happening. So I want you to think about those two so you can describe each one of those, right? And describe some of the information that you've heard about it. Then you'll go into the part about the research. Now this is the deal. Many of you may not know where you want to research. And I only want you to tell me between two to three spaces that you think you would use to research this topic. So things like the, um, so if you did this with the background reading, right, the Google, the Wikipedia, the online CQ research, or the opposing viewpoints, the Gale, all of those databases that we have at the library, was there one in particular that you found to be more informative about your topic than another? Are journals going to be something that you are looking to? For many of you, you may even know somebody who suffers from the repercussions of this issue. Maybe one of your things that you would like to mention is that you will be conducting an interview with that person. Maybe there is a website that you came across that is an advocacy website for this program and through it you see that they have done tons of research and that they've raised 60 million dollars so you know that they are going to be a credible source to use. So all it is simply doing is telling me where you plan on researching. So I plan on using, is there a specific database you plan on using, is there a specific journal that you think is going to assist you, was there a website. So pick two of those. And if you don't have to, start to explore and find out why you think that's going to help you to provide the most competent, knowledgeable, and expert information to your audience. Because ideally, that's what I want you to communicate, is why this information you deem to be credible and worthwhile to even talk about <coughs> important to use when reproducing information for a large group. Does that make sense, y'all? 
And then the last thing that I want you to do for the last main point, so did that one make sense? Like, what I just described? <laughs> okay. Are you, you can go back and watch that part. Yeah. So it talks about the research. Okay, the last main point that you are going to discuss is the element of social justice. So what we need to know is justifying how this is social justice. Where does this disparity occur? And that's why it's social justice. Is the resource that you're talking about or the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, etc. Like, what is it that we all should have access to that isn't being accessed because of this information? It fits into the realm of social justice because when women are objectified, we typically will only show specific parts of their body. Then what that leads us to believe is that women aren't even people to begin with, and we simply dehumanize them by cutting them up into boobs, butts, and legs. And when you start to take the face away from a woman and put her in sexualizing, compromising positions, one is then led to dehumanize them and consider them less than human, and thus violence is more likely to occur. And that's actually how it happens. It happened like with the idea of like slavery. If we can dehumanize these people, people to believe that they're not human to begin with, or equal, then we can justify our reasoning and make it easier for the abuses and atrocities. And it's the same thing that we do all the time for the purpose of inequity. If we can keep women worrying about their bodies or we can keep women sexualized or if we can keep women being abused and being sexually assaulted, then what don't they get to have in life? Does that make sense? But that's my own idea of social justice. So whatever elements of social justice really spoke out to you, you can utilize the definition from the textbook. This would be a great place to use the definition if you wanted to. For me, social justice means blank, if you wanted to. And then show me how your topic fulfills that definition of social justice. Does that make sense, y'all? Does it? Mm -hmm. yes. OK, good. Then what do we have are? Yay! Get to that conclusion, huh? So when you conclude, you give it? Signpost, I better know you're closing, right? So to finish today. And then you'll go into your thesis again. Remind me, I forgot already. So I told you a little bit about some of the key issues. I told you about how I'm going to research and where I'm going to get that information. And finally, I told you how this exists in the realm of social justice. All so that you can understand this question that I will be exploring throughout the semester. Why are women, right, whatever. And then we'll go back to our? Yeah, you go back to your attention getter. What now do we understand about that fact, that statistic, that story, little Timmy? Whatever you told me. Manny. Why can't I can't remember Manny. Or Manny. Time yourself. Two to three minutes. That means each main point, 45 seconds in length at most. You get in and out of that introduction, you get in and out of that conclusion. Sound good? You all can email me this speech at any time. I'm more than happy to look it over until 5 o'clock the night before. Plan on getting an email to, by, from me by tomorrow morning regarding, all right, if it's not tomorrow, tomorrow by 3, because I may need to use my office hours tomorrow, to get these feedback on your topic. And if you do want to set up a time to talk on the phone about your topic instead of me snapping and you can't meet today, we can do that as well. Sound good? What's up, hon? Do we need to focus on this here? It's just another idea that I gave to you. It's, there's an extra one on there so that you can expand the grid, make it two pages if you want it, okay. front and back, and then use it as you're speaking notes. Okay. Something new. Takes another pop if you all want. And I don't mean soda, I mean Tootsie. Pop, comma, Tootsie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh-oh.